Nvidia just dropped a new AI tool that promises to crush its competition. But does Sana live up to the hype? Let's find out. Wow. <laughs> uh, there. That was pretty damn quick. <laughs> At a time when a new AI image generator seems to drop every day, NVIDIA's Sana promises unprecedented speed and quality, capable of producing 1024 by 1024 images in less than a second and 1496 by 1496 so 4K images in under 10 seconds, even on consumer-grade hardware, so that means a low-end GPU. But how does it actually stack up against established models like Stable Diffusion and Flux? How does SANA compare then? Okay, well, SANA, I've just told you, can do 4K images on a 3090 GPU within a few seconds. SANA is basically 16.8 megapixels. Flux, on the other hand, can only go to 2 megapixels maximum, that basically means 1408 by 1408, literally only 12% of the pixels that you can get from SANA. And if you're on the more expensive RTX 1490 GPU using the FP8 compressed version of Flux Dev, then it'll take about 30 seconds to generate that. If you're on a low-end GPU, forget being able to even create a 2 megapixel image using Flux. And if you're going to create an image with Flux, you're looking at a couple of minutes on that lower end GPU as well. So in terms of resolution and speed, Sana definitely wins by miles. Well, like I said to you, Sana can generate images up to 4K in resolution. Let's have a quick look at some of these images and then we'll talk about what's good and what's bad with them. As you can see, some of these images, the faces are very distorted and they don't look right at all. Despite the fact that there's actually 4K resolution there to actually work with. Now, one of the reasons why some of these other models have very odd looking faces or distortions is because the resolution that they're working at is too low for them to be able to actually create the face image. There's not enough noise in that specific area to do it. That shouldn't be the case with SANA's 1496 by 1496 image generation. However, you can see in these examples, it is a problem. Now, this is a problem that they are actually aware of and have actually addressed over in the GitHub comment section. You can see that other people have had the exact same problem with very freaky results. And the answer from the team there is that it is a problem with the type of encoder they're using, and this will be mitigated in the update coming later on this year. So there should be an update before January the 1st that will fix this issue. Now, as you can see some, from some of these images that we've got, the resolution is quite impressive. We can really zoom in and when you've got the face full screen like we have on these portraits here, you've got some huge amount of detail in the skin there. And it does look pretty fantastic. Though there are, of course, those slight issues. Where I've really found that the SANA model shines is with non-realistic images. So if you do anything arty, like a anime manga character, or, or something a bit more like an illustration, then you get great results. It's only when you're trying to get realistic faces that are small on the screen where the actual model struggles. Does this mean that we write off this model altogether? Well, I would say hold your horses because here's where this model really actually takes off. We have to remember, yes, all right, there are definitely some issues here. We have got ways to work around it. The reason why we might want to actually work around this rather than just abandon it altogether is the speed and efficiency of these generations. We're able to create these images in under a second. Uh, yeah, we're talking a hundred times faster than flux despite being 20 times smaller. So yes, Flux will give you better faces, it will give you detail, and it is obviously more established than the SANA model right now. But this SANA model is so quick that there is actually a way we can make use of it alongside Flux 
To quickly create images that we're very happy with the composition and also have great faces in them. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. But what I want to just quickly touch on is the technology and the reason why Sana's actually able to generate these images at such high speed. Flux and Stable Diffusion use what's called a they, a variable autoencoder to compress images as part of the training. And that data is then compressed into the model. What NVIDIA have done with this one is they've actually created something called a deep compression autoencoder. So this instead of a VAE is a DC AE. And what it has is a 32 times compression advantage over that traditional they. This means that it is far more efficient in terms of speed and able to create higher resolution images because it's not going to suck up all of your VRAM every time you generate an image. Now, the hardware requirements for this are actually pretty decent. So it's designed to be efficient. You can run it on a device with as little as nine gigabytes of VRAM right now. However, there is the upcoming quantized version, which means you'll be able to run it on under eight gigabytes of VRAM. And at the same time, they will have fixed the Sano to 1.5 and the DCAE to 1.5. So the faces won't be all weird and deformed. Now, the speed at which it's able to create these images means that you're able to get through lots of iterations. You're able to tweak your prompts, get fast, almost real-time results. I wouldn't be surprised if Sana ends up being integrated into some of the painting apps out there so that you can do the live painting of an image and have it update using Sana. I can see that being something that comes up soon. Now I'm going to very quickly show you how we might be able to use Sana with Flux right now. One of the problems we have with Flux is that when we're developing and when we're creating an image, it can take a couple of minutes, especially if you're using it on a lower end GPU to create an image. So you don't know if you're going to like the image you get at the end. And that can be very frustrating. It can take you quite a lot of time to get your image right. My workflow would be to use Sana to very quickly work through some of these prompts. So let's just quickly run it. And what we're able to do is, of course, go through a load of iterations very quickly here. We'll get the composition that we want. So we keep going. Try again. That was quite good. I quite like that one. In fact, I'm pretty happy with that. The hand is a little bit off, but let's just say we're going to fix that in the next bit of the workflow as well. So let's just say that we're happy with this image. It's got the low resolution look to it. We go ahead and save this somewhere on our desktop. So we'll call it Dark Fantasy 2 and we'll save it. Okay, so happy with that. As you can see, it's really managed the aesthetic really well. It does look like an old VHS version, uh, fantasy film. But of course, we've got a dodgy face. But now here's where we're going to do the next bit. We're going to open Flux. And if you haven't installed Flux already, then I recommend that you follow this video up above, which will show you how to install it and will show you how to use it. And it does all of that information. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the InPaint tab, bring the image in. You do that by clicking on this checkerboard image. We'll use this one for now because it's here anyway. And what we'll do is we'll just zoom in. You've got this paint brush and we will paint over the face. We'll scroll down. We want this in paint area to be only masked. We can leave this where it is. We're using the shuttle diffusion model. So we're setting samples. So we are setting sample steps to four. We want to come down here and click on soft in painting. And you want to set the denoising strength to 0 0.4. In here, you've got to write your prompt. So low resolution, beautiful woman. So we want it to kind of match this in terms of resolution look. And then we're going to just hit generate. Now, it might take a minute to do this. However, we've already got the composition the way we want it. So we've actually sped up our process here. We're not generating a hundred different images inside of Flux to get the one that we like the composition. We've done that using Sana and very quickly. We're then just using this to fix the face. 
And then as you can see, we've actually got a detailed face in here. It's probably maybe still a little too sharp, but as you can see, it's fixed that image completely from what we had in there before. So I went back into it. I added a few more keywords there, blurry, soft focus, grainy into the mix and look at the result. Now that face really fits in with the overall image and it looks fantastic. It looks so good. We've got this really great composition. We've got great aesthetic to the image and a perfect face as part of that image as well. And just so you want to do more, why not just do all of it in flux? Well, like I said, first of all, you're looking at a couple of minutes per generation every time and hoping that you get a result and waiting and then changing and altering it. Whereas in Sano, you can quickly generate the overall composition in a few seconds at most. But also as well, Flux doesn't like to follow the aesthetic as well either. If I was to take the same prompt that we used here and generate an image of Flux, the actual image generation will not have this same kind of uh, low resolution look. It tries to make it far too sharp. So there's a couple of reasons why you might want to use this workflow. Let's just try it with the example we just created in Sana then quickly. Let's go here, image six, let's drag that over. That's imported, you can see we've got weird face, hand is weird, we could fix that too, but let's just do the, let's just do the face to start with. Let's scroll in and zoom in, you see how weird that looks. Let's just quickly paint over the face. And what I'll show you is what to do if it doesn't work quite so well. So let's do that. I'm going to use the same prompt, low resolution, blurry, soft focus, grainy, 1980s VHS, beautiful woman's face. And we're just going to make double check our settings. So we've got it um, set to four steps. We've got it on denoising of 0 0.4 and soft in painting is on. We can press generate. And we have our results. If we have a look at it, um, you see, all right, the face is fixed, but it doesn't really fit now with the rest of the image and the hair and the face look very different. So what you can do to improve that is actually you can give the model a little bit more space and a little bit more context to work with, but also you can, by expanding the mask area, it will blend in slightly better because you won't have this sudden difference between the blurriness on this hair and the detail in that face. So I'll just quickly come back here. We'll expand our selection to include the hair. And then we can just generate it again. And here's the result of that. And you see that it just fits so much nicer now. And if we actually look here, we're only 24% zoomed out. We can really zoom in on this image and it really does feel like it's a film still. This is a hundred percent zoom in. And you can see we've even got like one of those like chromatic aberration on the edges here, proper old video look. And I think it just looks really fantastic. What a great result we've got from using this workflow. I right. now Sana is free to use over on the NVIDIA's um, MIT web page. However, if you want to do it locally, you can do that as well. Like I said, there's going to be the quantized versions of the model coming soon, which means that you'll be able to run it on any GPU almost. If you want to install it locally right now, you can do that via the GitHub page. Scroll down here and there is actually some information here about to do it. You need to install Python. You use Anaconda or Miniconda, and then you'll do the Git clone and install that way. If you subscribe to the channel, I will do a full video of installing this when it works on an eight gigabyte VRAM GPU, because that's what I'm running here. I'll show you how to do all of that then. In the meantime, you can use Sina for free online here at the address in the link in the description, and then you can use Flux to fix the vases, which I've shown you how to do in this video here. Hopefully that helps you and that you like the look of what they're doing over Asana. Yes, it's got some work to get it to perfect, but speed is key. And having that with 4K quality resolution images 
is going to be a massive game changer. If you want to learn how to install Flux on your low-end PC, watch this video next. Please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one, Prompt Engineers.